In news from Jamaica, will opposition senators return for duty in the Senate on Friday? That's the big question. However, opposition senator Marlene Malahu Fort has been given the clearance to do so. Opposition members have been upset with a decision to suspend their colleague. But on Thursday, the Senate agreed on a motion to have Mrs. Malahu Fort reinstated. Our reporter, Tanika Thomas, was at Senate and files this report. It's time to move on. That was the general tone of government senators who were left alone at Thursday's sitting of the upper house. Opposition senators followed through on their threat and boycotted the Senate on Thursday. Opposition and government senators have been at odds since the suspension of JLP Senator Marlene Malahu Fort last Friday. Mrs. Malahu Fort was barred from the chamber because she failed to provide a copy of a letter to Senator. President Floyd Morris. The letter formed part of her contribution to the three bills being debated to replace the UK Privy Council with the CCJ. According to Mrs. Mallow Ford, the letter claims that the UK Privy Council had expressed an interest to hear cases in Jamaica. On Thursday, Senate President Floyd Morris says he still hadn't received a copy of the document. However, he expressed that he was willing to extend an olive branch in the best interest of the country. He said given that Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding was able to obtain a copy of the letter in question from the UK Privy Council which he laid on the House, there was no need to uphold the suspension against the opposition member. I have also factored most importantly the national good and interest in order to make the debate on the CCJ continue. And based on that, I will be allowing a member to move a motion to accommodate the lifting of the suspension. With that said, Leader of Government Business in the Senate, A.J. Nicholson, moved a motion for the suspension against the opposition member to be lifted. And whereas a copy of the said letter was subsequently received by the Minister of Justice from the Privy Council of the United Kingdom and will be circulated to the Senate forthwith. And whereas it is in the interest of the national good that the debate on the bills to implement the Caribbean Court of Justice continue without delay. Be it resolved that the standing orders be suspended to ensure this honorable Senate to remove the suspension, to enable the honorable Senate to remove the suspension placed on Senator Malou Fort, and in so doing, permit her to resume her seat at the sitting of the Senate as of, as of Thursday, October 29, 2015. The question is, that the motion be approved. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. The motion is approved. Opposition senators were a no-show at Thursday's sitting of the Senate after making it clear that they would not do so unless the suspension against their colleague Senator Marlene Malo Fort is lifted. Now, government senators have acceded to that request and they have made it clear that it's now time to move on with the nation's business. Government Senator K.D. Knight, in supporting the motion, called on his colleagues to put country above self. There is a high ground up there. And we have to get to that high ground. I'm putting country before party. I'm putting people before self and I'm hoping that this debate will continue and I'm going to be bold enough to say as early as tomorrow because there should be nothing to prevent it from continuing tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
For his part, Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding says it's important for all 21 legislators of the Senate to resume the debate on the CCJ bills. It is a fundamental debate as to whether or not we want our final court to continue 53 years after in independence and onwards as a country thinks about such issues as reparations for the past horrors of our history and so on. If we're still holding on to a court that sits in London, which was set up in 1833 in the era of slavery. This debate is bigger than the PNP. This debate is bigger than the JLP. This debate is bigger than the PNP and the JLP combined. So it's a big debate which will have a big impact of one of the most important pillars of a society, the justice system. The Senate resumes on Friday. Reporting for CNN Caribbean News, I'm Tanika Thomas. Meanwhile, Senate President Floyd Morris still believes he has nothing to apologize for. He maintains he acted in accordance with the standing orders when he suspended Mrs. Malahu Fort. In a letter to the leader of opposition business in the Senate, Tom Tavares Finson, he also made it clear that it's Mrs. Malahu Fort who should apologize for her disrespectful conduct. Senator Finson further went on to ask for me to apologize to the member. And I want to indicate via this media, the parliament, that there is absolutely no intention for me to apologize to the member because I have not violated any standing order. I have not violated any rules uh, where the suspension is concerned. And the leader of government business in the Senate, A.J. Nicholson, is also refusing to apologize. His opposition counterpart, Tom Tavares Finson, had also requested a retraction of the suspension and an apology before opposition senators returned to the House. My counterpart, Senator Tavares Finson, in writing to you and writing to me, well, copying me, had asked for apologies. I ask the public of Jamaica to consider whether those who have erred and erred grievously can expect apologies. Meanwhile, Government Senator Lambert Brown says it was crucial to tender an apology to the staff members of the Parliament who are caught up in the debacle. In an open letter to Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, a group connected to the JLP had stated that a male staff was sent to retrieve Mrs. Malahu Fort while she was in the restroom. Upon learning that she had gone to the ladies' room, they sent a male marshal to retrieve her from it disregarding any code of decency, her dignity and the rights to privacy and her inalienable right to attempt to a basic biological function in a dignified fashion. Upon her sending back a message to the chamber and requesting a female orderly to retrieve her and I asked myself, where was I last Friday? when a male orderly came to retrieve the handbag. So what we're seeing here is that people are prepared to say negative things, to impugn the character of the independent and decent public servants that serve our parliament irrespective of which party is in power. It's a shame, a downright shame. I know because of decency, an apology is owed to them. When I saw the member sending out on Facebook a message about the clerk failing to tell you, Mr. President, that she had come back here, I asked myself, what madness have descended on these people that they choose to cover up a lie to attack the staff of this parliament?